Well, welcome to the Botanical Medicine Study Course with me, your host and instructor, Stephanie Georgiev. Thanks to longtime subscribers and welcome to new ones. At the time of the posting of this video, we're on the verge of summer, but wow, it feels like it now. I hope you're having a relatively cool time these days, mostly in temperature terms. Now, for this week's Herb of the Week, we're going to explore a plant that is widely used in Ayurvedic medicine as, and has become quite popular in North America and Europe, mainly for its so-called so superfood qualities, Moringa. Now, Moringa is one of those plants in English that is mainly known by the first word of its Latin binomial, Moringa olifera. In Hindi, Moringa is known as Sajan and is uh, in every language throughout this incredibly diverse and large country of India. There's all kinds of ways to say this. In, in all sorts of languages. Now, Moringa is a tree. It is fast growing and drought resistant um, of the Maringronaceae family. And it's native to the Indian subcontinent and is used extensively in South Asia and Southeast Asia. In English, it's also called a drumstick tree. But I think Moringa is more fitting since I cannot see dr the drumstick analogy, but that's me. It's also known as horseradish tree because the roots and the bark taste a little bit like horseradish. Now, Moringa olifera is a fast growing deciduous tree, which means a plant that sheds leaves and such when they've reached maturity. Now, Moringa can get up to a height of 10 to 12 feet and a trunk diameter of about 18 inches. Um, I'm sorry, the, the tree can grow between 12, 10 to 12 meters, which is 33 to 39 feet. So it can be quite a large tree. The bark has a whitish gray color and is surrounded by a thick cork. Young shoots have purplish or greenish white hairy bark, and the tree has an open crown of drooping fragile branches and the leaves that look a little bit feathery and have tripinnate leaves. And you can see that <clears throat> in the drawings, you know, they have all of those cute little leaves. The flowers are fragrant and hermaphroditic, which means they're both male and female, and they're surrounded by five unequal yellowish white petals. Its green leaves are, you, and also the pods when they're green are used as vegetables as well as traditional medicine. Now in Ayurvedic medicine, this is Sai Jan, the root and stem bark leaves, fruits, and seeds all have medicinal qualities, and they all do different things. But essentially, the plant is pungent and bitter, and it balances kapha and vata. And it comes from the class of herbs in Ayurveda that gets rid of worms uh, in the digestive system. It's also used as a wound healer. And when you see the roots, stem bark leaves, you know, it's like the whole thing <clears throat> is used as healing. And uh, so the, the leaves can be used in juice or as a tea. The pods are used as tea. Uh, sometimes the juice is also applied topically. They even use it as, as eye drops. Um, the bark and flowers uh, and leaves can be pulverized and applied topically for all sorts of skin issues. Um, the leaves, the leaves specifically, both uh, internally, 
can be used to control blood pressure and glucose levels. Uh, they're very high in vitamins and minerals. Sometimes when you look on the uh, constituents, it's like every single vitamin known to humanity is found in these, these leaves. Um, they are also used to treat indigestion. They're used to treat diarrhea, colic, uh, inflammation, fever, and even kidney disease. Now, the seeds are very good uh, taken internally uh, for any type of nerve pain, inflammation, and the flowers are especially useful for getting rid of intestinal worms. Now, depending on your diagnosis, and Ayurveda is a lot like traditional Chinese medicine, um, there are so many ways to have an illness in these traditions, it's quite amazing. So you need to have a specific type of menstrual pain, and this will help that. Now, the modern usage of moringa is really as a superfood. And what is really good is uh, that the leaves help um, even out blood sugar. So they're anti-hyperglycemic, which means they're really good for anybody that's dealing with blood sugar problems. They also uh, lower um, blood fat. They lower cholesterol. Um, they have anti-cancer properties. They do all kinds of interesting research and say that this inhibits whatever signal to cancer cells. Um, it's very high in vitamins and minerals. Uh, it's really, it's really good for you. I don't think I've ever eaten this, but I have been to India. So maybe it was served to me and I thought it was something else. Uh, but um, it's, it's used quite frequently, particularly the um, pods uh, when they're green, as well as the leaves in various types of cooking. Now, the uh, chemical constituents, and again, this is from my wonderful uh, go-to slide company called Science Direct, and the flowers are known to contain a lot of flavonoids, alkaloids, uh, sugars, amino acids, um, all sorts of things, and <clears throat> they're called marinogens and moringogens and beta cysterols and all sorts of things. Now, what's of note, and this is why it's considered a, a superfood, is that a single serving of moringa leaves has more vitamin C than an orange. So that's pretty, pretty uh, impressive. And they also have bioflavonoids, um, which are really good at helping uh, prevent inflammation. And there's all kinds of lovely things in this plant. Now, there are numerous ways to take Moringa. Uh, if you go to an Ayurvedic practitioner, they'll probably put it in some sort of formula for you. And I always recommend doing that. Um, if you have a specific issue, it's really good to go see an Ayurvedic practitioner because this is predominantly an Ayurvedic herb. I've never heard of it when I was um, in my acupun acupuncture studying. Now, as it's considered a superfood, some people put this in their smoothies or in, in their green juices in the morning, and you can get the powder, the powdered extract, um, all kinds of uh, ways to do that. It's also available in teas if you just want to take a tea. Um, and it's also avail available in capsules as well as tinctures. Um, the, the big caution with this herb is you really should not take it when you're pregnant or breastfeeding. That seems to be the big no-no in all of the literature because it might um, cause uterine contractions. And if you're in certain states in the United States, you might go to jail if you take this and have a, a miscarriage. So be careful. And uh, please check with your pharmacist and Ayurvedic practitioner 
if you're on certain types of drugs. I didn't see anything in the literature that said it would inhibit, but it's always good to check with experts first. Now there's another way to use this incredible plant and it's through food. And almost all parts of this tree are eaten. And uh, the, the raw beans, which for some reason English speakers call drumsticks, which I, that doesn't look like a drumsticks to me. They're eaten in Asia and Africa and they're green when they eat them. Um, in other parts of the world, the leaves are preferred and the flowers can also be cooked and eaten. And they're said to taste like mushrooms. And the moringa is widely used in South Indian cuisine. And there are stir fries, dolls, and all sorts of different ways to incorporate this plant into your meals. And I've never seen like fresh moringa leaves. And I used to frequent Asian markets when I lived in Southern California. And I never noticed that, but I wasn't looking for it. So I can't say whether or not it was available, but I'm sure they're available dried through Asian uh, markets, particularly Indian markets. And I have a link in the program notes on some interesting recipes for you to try. Now it's said that in ancient times in India, a moringa tree was always planted near a well because it was thought to purify the water. Now, obviously, since this plant is native to India, a certain type of climate is needed. So I don't think this would do well if you live on the Arctic Circle or uh, close by. But if you have such a climate and you want a tree in your garden, this might be a good one. I saw some links for Australian uh, nurseries. So, you know, if you live in Australia, this might be a nice plant to grow in your garden. And I have a link in the program notes on how to start a moringa plant from seeds. Now, since it grows to be quite tall, we're talking 10 meters or 30 feet, uh, I don't think it would grow well in a container. <laughs> so I would suggest after starting it, you would want to put it in the ground. But you can decide how you want to grow this powerhouse of health in your own uh, place of living. So however you wish to use this incredible plant, Moringa, either in your dolls, uh, in your stews, in your stir fries as tea, or in your garden, or as a you know leaf juice on your skin, however you want to use this, I hope you come to appreciate the incredible gift of the Moringa plant to the planet. This is Stephanie George of saying thank you so much for spending your valuable time with me. Make sure to ch check the program notes uh, for links uh, to do with this, this episode as well as other lovely uh, initiatives. And until next time, be well.